Now we've got a couple of definitions that we need to make sure we get in there. Uh, type 1 error, type 2 error, and then the word power. Got to make sure we know what those three things are saying when those words are being used, or phrases, if it's the case. First, the type 1 error. The type 1 error is where you reject the null hypothesis when in fact the null hypothesis is true. Now in order for you to make a rejection, there has to be an alpha level set. So this pink line right here is the alpha level that's been set, whatever it may be. The yellow area that's in here is the area at which you will reject this null hypothesis, which is right here. Now if and when that's the case, what you're saying is, is that the, you're pretty certain that the null hypothesis is inaccurate based on probability because you landed over in this little area right here. However, it could very well possibly be that this was accurate and you did just hit on some long shot and landed over there. And then that means you've made a type 1 error. Again, it's not a mistake. You didn't screw up. It's just that the probability went against you. Now, you can also make a type 2 error. That's where you fail to reject the null hypothesis if the null hypothesis is actually false and your alternative was true. Now that's a little bit more of a common of a type of an error to make in that you set a significance level and it's a little bit difficult to get over that significance line. So it's simpler to make that type 2 error. Both of these errors, type 1 and type 2, come with a probability. We've already talked about the type 1 error. The probability is quite simply 1 minus the alpha level. So in other words, you landed in this yellow area over here. So therefore, there you go. That is your type 2 error if you land over in that area right there. Now the probability of making a type 2 error is a little bit more complex. What you have to look at first is look at the blue here. This blue right in here. That blue is the area where you'll make the type 2 error. So let's try to get at least our brain around how it is you land there. First, a particular alternative has to be established. You received some alternative. And you'd say that this alternative is right here. Now, with this alternative, if we suppose that it's actually true, then there's a distribution, this green one right here, of the samples about that mean. And so therefore there's a, po a possibility and a probability that you could make this type 2 error based on that alternative. This is actually kind of a confusing little topic. Ultimately, the things you have to understand from it are that you can define it. The type 2 error is where you fail to reject a null hypothesis when in fact you were correct and your alternative was right. And then you have to say, how can I make it such that that probability is less? So now look carefully at the blue area. And what are ways that you could make it such that that blue area would, would decrease? Well, first of all, this number right here. If I took that pink line and I just simply moved it in that direction, actually scratch that. I mean, if you move it in the other direction, sorry about that, this direction. If I move this pink line into the direction to the left, then that will make it such that the pink, or excuse me, the light blue here, this area right in here, in the corner, right in there, will decrease. Secondly, imagine if I made, and I'm going to put a big old circle around this, this green graph tighter, thinner. In other words, not as flattened out as it is, where this is kind of a flat distribution. But actually, instead, the distribution was like this. Well, then obviously, if you look carefully right there, you'd see that the blue would also decrease. And how do I make a normal distribution get tighter and tighter? If I lower the standard deviation. So there's two ways now we've got. We could move the 
Yeah, let's clear that up a little bit, actually. You can move the pink line in that direction, which is increase the alpha level. You can lower the standard deviation. And if we think about it, the way to lower the standard deviation is get a larger N. And then the third way that you can lessen this little blue area right here is if you literally get a different alternative that's more away from the null hypothesis. So in other words, you actually get an alternative that's actually somewhere over here. So that way, when the normal distribution graph is drawn around it, the blue has decreased. Now all of that, that's how you lessen the probability of the type 2 error. Nobody's ever going to ask you to calculate the probability of the type 2 error, even though everybody in the class is actually capable of doing it. We've learned enough to do it. It is a touch complex, and it's not something that we investigate in this, in this course. But you have to know what the power is. And the power of a test is mathematically 1 minus the probability of a type 2 error. So if ever it comes up in a prompt of some sort, asking you to solve for the power, you will be given the type 2 error's probability, and then you just simply subtract that number from 1, and that is the power of the test. And you could look at power, and if you can kind of imagine Darth Vader in Star Wars saying, the power, it's like that. It's how strong the test is. It's how good it is. Because the probability of making the type 2 error is the probability, that's where you have not rejected an alternative a null hypothesis, you should have. So the lower that number is, the better the test is. And so the power of the test is a measure of that. And it's a pretty good measure. A lot of statisticians use it. So to recap, the probability of a type 1 error is simple. You have an alpha level, and it's 1 minus it. The probability of a type 2 error is complex and not something we need to figure out. But we do know three ways to decrease that probability, get a larger alpha level, get a more extreme alternative, or a larger n, which would then decrease the standard deviation, making this graph taller. And then the probability of a type 1 error excuse me, a type 2 error, if subtracted from 1, gives you the power of the test. These definitions are key and things you need to know. So make sure that all of these notes are clear. And by all means, ask me questions, as I understand that this particular graph that we have here is not the easiest one to actually understand. And of course, I'll go over it in class.